Hi, I'm David Dusek, a senior writer with Golf Week, golfweek.com, as well as USA Today Sports. And I'm joined by a couple of guys at Mitsubishi, and we are going to be making some news today. In this video series, we've talked a lot about some of the really successful shafts that Mitsubishi Chemical has released over the last, say, 10, 15 years. But now we've got a brand new family of shafts to talk about today, which is pretty exciting. So I'm joined by Avery Reed, who's a tour promotions manager for Mitsubishi Chemical. Avery, how are you, pal? I'm great, David. How are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. I've also got Todd Barreto right here. Todd is a composite design engineer working with Mitsubishi. How are you, Todd? Good, David. How are you doing? I'm, I'm excellent. So I am here to learn. I'm here to get some journalistic chops down and to really get into some of the stuff here because we've got a brand new family of chefs that's going to be coming out. Avery, why don't I let you do uh, the unveiling here? What are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about our new brand, Kaya Lee. And this is very exciting for us because we haven't released a new family of shafts since 2015. So back in 2015, we released Tensei. Tensei was our new line. And as everybody knows, it became very popular on tour, one of the most used shafts. So, you know, our direction now is to kind of create the same thing with this new family. And you know, basically what we're doing is we're calling it Kaya Lee. And it's not to be mistaken with, there was back in the day, a, a Kaya Lee and the Diamana line, but this is gonna be its own its own family, its own line. And basically, you know, when you look at the name Kaya Lee, it's designed to invoke the power and the mystery of the ocean. And, you know, in today's world, we've only discovered about 15% of the ocean and we feel the same uh, with golf technology as far as shafts are concerned. So this is kind of giving us a chance to create new technologies and we're very excited about it because we've done a lot of testing with the shaft. So excited to talk about it today. That's pretty cool. So um, I'm sure Jacques Cousteau and George Costanza are thrilled that we're going back <laughs> to the ocean and you're you know, invoking the marine biologist thing. When you guys bring out a new family of shafts, as you said, this is gonna be the first one in about six years that's gonna be coming yes. out. Todd, let me ask you this. Do what, what is the thing that brings out a, a new family of shafts? If it's been six years, does, for the most part, Mitsubishi Chemical work on the process that people like Avery who are working on the PGA Tour and with elite golfers come to you and tell you that this is sort of what we're looking for. We need to develop a new line as trends appear for the most part with drivers, but also in woods. Or do, are you guys constantly working on things? And then when you feel like we've got a product that I want to take to somebody like Avery and to introduce to elite players, that's when a new family is brought out. Which way does it go? Uh, it's a good question. So typically uh, in development, when we, st let's say, stumble upon something that we weren't expecting or we uh, learn some things that uh, we expected to see, so confirmation of our theories, we start to go down that tunnel, down that path. And in the case of Kai Lee, what we learned uh, really about four to five years ago is um, how important the torque core is of a golf shaft with respect to feel. And uh, what we were trying to do, and we've been successful in doing this, is to take a relatively low launch, low spin, relatively stable, stiff shaft, which inherently feels bad to most golfers. Um, those kind of shafts uh, tend to be boardy, tend to Board, be really yeah. stiff, and and make that a softer feeling shaft with the performance we are looking for. So how did we get there? And, and we'll explain a little bit how we got there. So this product development not just took place here on the shaft side, but there was a lot of development that took place on the material side to make these materials in a form that would allow us to get to our end goal. So Avery, is is that for the most part true? Is that what you hear on tours that a lot of guys, especially are who are you know we're getting younger, heavier hitting, faster players, they're usually looking for lower spin, lower initial launch angle kind of products, which can be excessively stiff and as Todd said, get really boardy for those players. Are you hearing we want more feel and as well, or do you not get that a lot of that feedback? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. And I think we've talked about it in past episodes, too, where, you know, feel out on tour is extremely important. And if you look at the physique of the modern golfer now, it's changed. You know, these guys now are athletes. They're stronger. They're swinging at it harder. And so, you know, we need something for those guys that, you know, they can overpower the golf club. And that's kind of the direction that we started with this. And, you know, it was a lot of fun. We actually developed this through our M lab and we did extensive testing through the motion reality system with gears. Um, and, you know, it was really fun to watch how we could create a shaft that was designed for these guys, but the stability and feel stayed awesome. And it was fantastic. 
So one of the let, let's sort of go from the outside to the in, and starting with the outside, Avery. This shaft, it looks like from what I've been able to tell, has almost like ocean waves or sort of a, a nautical graphic to it, but it doesn't look especially. At least, you know, I would think in the address position, it's not going to be something that is going to be visually jarring to players when they're looking down at the ball. How did you guys balance that out? And did I see something that wasn't there? No, you're absolutely correct. And, you know, the, the hard part, too, is when it comes to graphics is that if a guy looks down and it's distracting, it'll never go and play. It doesn't matter how well it performs. It's It can't be a distracting thing. And obviously, you know, again, going back to Kylie and invoking the power of the ocean we wanted to kind of create something that symbolized that so we were able to do it in a really clean uh fantastic looking way okay so todd let's go under the hood then you know we've now seen what, what it's going to look like on on the top under the hood what did you guys do to to try and give you know in kylie white which is what we're talking about today that low launch low spin quality but also enhanced feel what'd you do um so we did two Two basic things, uh, two categories. The first being that we this shaft is a tapered butt shaft. It's not a constant diameter shaft, so there is a taper. And if you look at our our entire blue board series, which are all tapered uh, tapered butt shafts, are by far our best feeling shaft shafts in a series. So, and we know why. Obviously, that taper allows that frequency to come up the shaft and not truncate when it hits a constant diameter section. So you get more, you get a broader spectrum of feel with a tapered shaft. The one thing you do give up with a tapered shaft, especially in the butt section, is added stiffness that you get with a, a constant diameter parallel butt. So we can we can overcome that with the use of material. So from a feel standpoint, we wanted to go with something that we have a lot of history with, which is our blue board. Uh, series, which are all tapered butts. So that that was the first major uh, jumping off uh, point. Uh, the second is what we're um, terming our super low resin content material and, and the torque core. As I mentioned earlier, the torque core uh, is by far uh, the section of the shaft that controls most of your feel and your feedback, especially in off center hits. So when you hit the ball on the toe, the club, mainly drivers, uh, or uh, on the heel, it produces certain vibrations that come up into the shaft. We can either choose to dampen those vibrations out or we can choose to enhance them. And in this case, the enhancement takes place on the torque core. And uh, typically what I did here, uh, just to show this, I've got a little quick drawing I did, and this might help explain a little bit more, ah. but um, let me pull it up here. And again, I apologize for the, the crudeness of this. Oh, wow. But, but this is basically a cross section of a graphite, typical graphite golf shaft. And what you see here is uh, the center section, what we call the torque core. You see these red little oval circles, and this represents a carbon fiber filament that's biased at a 45 degree, and this whole section is called the torque core. When you cut that shaft and look at it, that round fiber becomes oval because we're, we're looking at it at an angle. So what's important here is that most graphite shafts use a standard resin content in the torque core, which is a combination of uh, the carbon fiber amount and the resin content. A typical resin content in most carbon structures is around 35% resin, 65% okay. carbon fiber. What we've been able to do with our material side is reduce that resin content down so low that we can pack more carbon fiber into the torque core. And you see over here to the right, this is our super low resin content material. And you can see the same red ovals, but you see a lot more of them in the torque core. And that means that we can pack more carbon fiber into that torque core and it does two things. It lowers the torque, obviously, because torque is controlled by, uh, in large part by the number of carbon fiber filaments you have in the torque core and the modulus or stiffness of that carbon fiber. So in using our MR70 fiber, our flagship fiber, we're able to use that fiber and drive the resin content down below 20%, which is really unheard of. Um, it's a real challenge just to even make the composite material before we even start rolling the shaft. So there's a lot of technology in just making the material to achieve this, this outcome. And what you can see here is the, the basic, the packing difference between the two. And what that does is that increases the envelope of frequency that a golfer feels coming up into their hands. So it, it enlarges that envelope. So we're able to capture higher frequencies and it increases the speed at which that, that wave energy comes up from the ball impact into your hand. So it does two things. It lowers the torque, it gives you a larger envelope at a faster speed coming up in your hands.
So for those of us who don't have an advanced chemical engineering background, <laughs> let me see if I can translate what you just said. <laughs> Essentially, Mitsubishi Chemical has developed a way to have less resin used in, in the shaft to increase the amount of carbon fiber material that you've got in the shaft. And all that, the more of the carbon fiber and the less the resin, the greater the, the spectrum of feel that golfers are going to have, whether they hit it pure, like, you know, right on the screws, or if they get it out towards the toe or the heel, they're going to feel that more easily, which Avery kicking to you, you've told me in the past, even if the best players don't put a good swing on the ball and don't make ideal contact, they want to know that. They don't want a shaft oftentimes that's going to hide that feeling, almost like a sports car. Like they want to feel the road, whether the road is bumpy yes. or smooth, right? 100%, yes. So, and and it was really fun with uh, Kylie when, when we were doing all of our gears testing. The one thing that we noticed was that, you know, compared to all kinds of other different shafts, I mean, we, we did plenty of testing on this. Um, that being able to create that stability, you know, we saw that players were actually hitting the center of the club face a lot more consistent now that we've been able to lower the torque and make it more stable. Um, and Why for them, that, that increases. I think it's just the stability of the shaft itself, the lower torque, you know, this, this profile for us is one of the lower torques that we've ever done. Um, and again, going back to that, you know, we still have to create feel because we don't want it to feel boardy. So we were able to create that as Todd was able to explain. And now you see guys that they can swing at it hard. The club stays where it's supposed to be. And then now impact is more center of the club face. So in so fact, one of the, yeah, I'm sorry. So, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. In fact, one of the first guys to put it in play this year, uh, first week putting it in play, led driver stats for the PGA Tour event that he was in. There you go. So, Todd, let me let me kick something to you then. So as you're developing and working with these materials, does Mitsubishi Chemical have a group that is basically just looking to figure out problems like this? Like, you know, is there a, a group or a division that you work with that, that tries to say, like, squeak out more and more percentages of resin or work with different types of carbon fiber and other materials because you guys have a lot of different materials in different shaft families for example we know that um but but how much work sort of goes on in the background to give you that which then hands off a shaft to avery which plays better gives them the qualities and gives them more feel like how much work goes into to just developing this stuff uh, good question uh there's a lot of work fortunately we have a team in japan more or less our counterparts in Japan that understand golf as well as we do, the golf shaft and how important and the special aspects and features we try and design around. But then we have our material group, which really honestly, we probably drive them nuts because we're constantly asking, can you do this? Can you do that? Right. And in the case of this low resin content, it's really difficult to make a pre-preg material at that low in resin content and still encapsulate all the carbon fibers so you don't have dry fibers and you know wet fibers in the structure. It it gets brittle, right? If the, the resin content gets too low, haven't you? I think you've told me before that you have a problem with it getting brittle and potentially cracking due to fatigue, right? Correct. And that's why we're only putting this technology right now into the torque core. We're not on the axial plies, the unidirectional plies that are controlling your bending stiffness and strength. We are not going this low in resin content. That would be a real challenge, a real issue because of ball strike, impact strength, and so forth. So we're not using this low resin content throughout the entire shaft. It's only in the torque core where it's protected. But even given that, we the technology to encapsulate all the different thousands of filaments that are in a carbon fiber toe is a real challenge. And then we're rolling a material that's very light or low in resin content, lightweight in nature. It tends to be dry and boardy. So just the the mechanism of how we actually roll the shaft and roll these materials on the shaft is a technology in and of itself on the manufacturing side. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that have their hands in this kind of technology, yep. uh, leading from the tour guys like Avery and myself, uh, and then the material side. And so. that's why I will let you be the one who builds that thing. And I'll just punch <laughs> on the keys because I am definitely not. Avery, it would seem now, so you've got the shaft that is in your quiver. You can bring it yep. to players, you know, out there. If I'm not mistaken by my count, you've got about three different white label shafts that that should be out there now. And and speaking Correct. for um, you know consumers who may be going into the aftermarket to to look at different shafts, and I would imagine also for fitters out there who are going to be looking at a broad spectrum of shafts out there, having color codes to get you at least started is a blessing. I mean, if I've got this mistaken, let me make sure that I've got this stuff right. 
The red shafts or shafts that are generally labeled red are going to be slightly higher spinning, slightly higher launching by and large. Then blue is going to be sort of moderate in between there. And then when you get into the white, which is what we're talking about with Kylie White now, that is going to be the lowest spinning, lowest um, initial launch angle product. Do I have that about right? You do have that exactly right. And, you know, part of the reason for that is it, it like you said, I mean, out on tour, these guys, they don't have a lot of time. So, you know, between media events and everything else, we're, we try to create things that just make it simple. So, yeah, now we, we currently have the, the Tensei 1K Pro. Uh, we have Diamana. And then now we've added Kaya Lee to the line. So we've got three different profiles, which are all going to create different feels, a little bit different launch angles and spin rates based on the feedback from the player. So it's nice to have three different options when you know that the player's looking for low launch, low spin. I was going to say, so now specifically when you're out there working with fitters on tour, you're heading out to a corn fair event, you're heading to a PJ tour event. And for fitters who may be watching this now, trying to think of like, okay, who am I going to get this into? What what are going to be yeah. the player qualities that you would say make somebody a candidate for Kylie White? Kylie White's going to be the lowest launching, lowest spinning out okay, of so our three whiteboard profiles. Down. This is this is way down. But again, what we've been able to do is we've made it where it can be the lowest launching, lowest spinning, but still have great feel. So for the hard hitter out there, this is going to be a perfect go to. OK. Sounds good. Well, listen, guys, I'm excited to learn and see how much more traction Kylie White is going to get. And I would imagine, although at this point we're, we haven't heard anything, at least I haven't heard about it, that Kylie, since this is the start of a new family, there may be different Kylie shafts coming at some point down in the future. But it's pretty exciting just to think that for the first time in five or six years, Mitsubishi Chemical has got a new family out there. And I'm sure we'll be seeing and learning a lot more about it in the future. So, guys, thanks yeah, a lot I, for giving I, us a Great education. Thank you. It's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. And I think it's actually going to be coming out to the public at the end of October. So we're really excited about this. Awesome. Absolutely. Very cool. Avery, Todd, thanks a lot for helping out today, guys. Thanks, Thank David. you. Appreciate it.